الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد الصادق الأمين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وعلى آله الطاهرين الطيبين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين وعلى أزواجه أمهات المؤمنين وعلى ذريته إلى يوم الدين سبحانك اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا اللهم علما وعملا متقبلا آمين يا رب العالمين We continue with the readings and discussions or descriptions of the status of awliya in this dunya and in the barzakh, the interlife. This life, the interlife. Dunya originally is an adjective meaning nearer or near or lower. So when we say ad dunya, the nearer or the lower, we mean the nearer life, the lower life, uh, the nearer world, the lower world, meaning our world that we live in. It has become a substantive and it has become the noun itself, so as if saying the world. But we should say at, at least say this world or this life. al hayat al-dunya, al-dunya. And as opposed to or as distinguished from the barzakh, which literally means a an isthmus or like a, uh, a, a in between, which is very nicely translatable as the interlife. So, this life and then the interlife, and then the 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 next life in the full sense of the term. But the first station of the next life is the interlife. The first station of akhira is barzakh. The first station of eternal life is the life in the grave. Now, so the life of the believer, just as the life of the believer in this world differs from the life uh, of the non-believer, in that the life of the believer is uh, imprinted with certain, with the certainty that. There is something more than life that is coming for sure. That certainty is the whole difference between a belief and paganism, belief and atheism, belief and uh, the dark uh, uh, lack of, of any belief in any, anything beyond the material body that then decays and becomes dust and then there's nothing after that. Whereas belief in the resurrection is the belief of, of uh, in, in the heavenly message and all of its various dispensations that is this constant that there is such a thing as uh, called the resurrection of the dead with a full life in the creator and through the creator through his power. And it is an argument that is running through the whole Quran that the one who created you out of nothing is even more able to recreate you after you have turned to dust. So if you concede the first point, which is creation out of nothing, and they all did, all of the pagans of the past that were addressed by the Holy Quran, including those that were addressed by the Holy Quran, the, uh, the pagans of pre-Islamic Arabia, believed that this creation didn't make itself. They considered that point, that there must be a creator behind it. So they accepted the fact that the creator created us and created everything else out of nothing. Because if, if it was out of something, then that something must have needed a creator too, and so on and so forth. So we must go back to out of nothing, eventually. 
They accepted that. And so the Quran uses used that as the logical proof against against the rejection rejection of the possibility of resurrection. That you you have to therefore accept the possibility of resurrection because you have accepted the certainty that we were not created out of uh, nothing by ourselves, but rather by a creator. That creator therefore has even more power to recreate you after having created you the first time, to recreate you again from what remains of that first creation. No matter how brittle, how insignificant and turned to dust and so forth, it is even easier because the prime matter was already present. And this is a logical argument and a rational argument that runs throughout the whole Quran. The argument for resurrection on the basis of the first creation. Allahu Akbar. So, similarly, among the believers also, the life of those with ironclad certainty is closer and closer to the reality of paradise on earth, as if they are already living in eternal life, or li already living in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such as when you see them, you, rem you are reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are, you are pointed to Allah before they even open their mouth. Yani their state has told you the whole story. Because as inheritors of the Prophet, upon him and his family with blessings and peace, they have inherited that a state of his that you, when you saw him, you immediately knew, he knew the news. <laughs> you understood the news already from seeing him. And so therefore, we are speaking about the life of those awliya Allah in the interlife, meaning after the life of this, uh, of the, on this earth has ceased, then a new life begins strong and higher than the, the previous one. And that is the life of the friends of Allah. They are alive in their graves, in keeping with their spiritual, prophetic inheritorship, including the knowledge of Allah and its effect on their essences by His permission. That knowledge of Allah has as if reformed them by His permission into people of yaqeen, yaqeen sadiq, truthful certainty. And they are given that miraculous state of uh, assurance in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that does not stop, because that is part of the hereafter, that is part of eternity, that is part of eternal life, that is part of, um, uh, of the true life, al-aish, aish al akhirah which is the life of the hereafter. As the companions would say, the true life is the life of the hereafter. So that begins for the awliya of Allah in this life already. And it is a God-given effect, all from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone that denies that, it's as if putting boundaries on the power of Allah. And it is a subtle shift, not so subtle, actually. It is more or less overt. We are not such materialistic people of doubt in ghaib. Ghaib, Quran begins with belief in ghaib. That those, who, those are the believers, those who believe in ghaib. So anyone that whispers to you any suggestion that there is something uh, awry with this, uh, this kind of belief, which is the, the true belief of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah from the generation of the Sahaba down to our time, and until the day of resurrection, as we, as the Taala has shown in the in his book, as the Prophet ﷺ has shown in his hadith, as the, was the practice and beliefs and teachings of the Sahaba and subsequent generation, a pure bounty from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, both in life and after death. The awliya have said, due to the effect that the purity of their inward self, inward selves and their spirits, that effect, due to the effect that that has over their outward persons and their bodies. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, don't say of the 
of the shuhada, because he gave, he gives them that, that they are dead. You say they were killed, they died, but don't say that that's that's the final state is death. So Allah gives them life again, and then I, <laughs> such indescribable, so indescribable that it's like the light of the sun. You cannot see it anymore. We will be blinded. You cannot look at it. You cannot see it. So they are in Barzakh. You, if you open the, the grave, you might see it, or, or you might see them there, or, uh, or they will be like everyone else because we deity of the matter. We do not hear the questioning in the grave, which takes place for everyone, not just the believers, but the unbelievers as well, as has been stated in the hadith. And yet, it's a reality. So, therefore, we do not question the states of Barzakh. We just take them as they have been described to us in the transmitted reports. But, again, it is a continuation of the states that have already been seen in life about them, the awliya of Allah. So, if it is said about the shuhada that, uh, that we are not allowed to say about them that they are Dead, but rather they are alive, sustained in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then a fortiori, in other words, even more so, is the case true for those who are above them. Al-Nabiyyin was Siddiqeen was Shuhada was Salihin. The Shuhada, therefore the Siddiqeen and the Prophets are above them. And we are now talking, when we say the Allah, we are talking about the Siddiqeen. Yani the most gracious of the friends of Allah that are uh, second to none but the prophets themselves. Yani in their staunch yaqeen, the certainty of, uh, of their belief and of their life in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that effect that their states, their God-given states, have on them can be has been trans, uh, described as a kind of light that that shows on them, which uh, was described in poetry as, in the following words: "When the brook becomes still, in a state of purity, and is kept from being stirred up." by the breeze you may see in it the sky without any doubt likewise the sun appears in that brook likewise the stars likewise or such is the faces of those of the loftiest heights in whose is seen the all magnificent when you see them, you are rem reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they would compare him to the sun rising, and they would compare him as our mother Aisha did, as we said last time, to the Holy Quran, out of shyness of going further and saying that he, he is like the, the manifestation of the divine attributes as far as the sacred law allows us to say. So she, she, she stopped short of that because of her adab and said her, his character is the Holy Quran. That is from as Suharawardi in Awarif al Ma'arif. His explanation of this a beautiful hadith of our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. So going beyond the life of the prophets in Barzakh, which has been well documented. And by, uh, for example, Imam al haqi in his uh, in his book on life of the graves, and Imam al suyuti also in al hawif in Fatah, a short treatise also on the life of the prophets. What about now the life of the non-prophets among the believers? Imam al suyuti has a book called Sharh al Sudur, and it is, يعني, a late book, a series of such books. Uh, bef before him, such as, for example, the Kitab al-Amwat 
and Kitab al Qubur of Ibn Abi Dunya, some of which we quoted uh, yesterday, uh, we quoted from, and uh, Al Bayhaqi's book Al Ba'ath wa Nushur, the Resurrection and the Rising. Uh, there is a Maliki Imam also, Sadil, uh, in Spain, Abdul Haq al Ishbili, he has a book called Al Aqibah, the Hereafter where he examines that. And Imam Al-Qurtubi, a famous author of great tafsir, which is uh, a mainstay also of, uh, of uh, Ash'ari uh, teachings, it is a very Ash'ari tafsir, and uh, uh, he has also a book on the divine names and attributes, which is uh, famous for that aspect. But he has a book called At-Tadkirah, the Ahwal al-Mawta wal-Akhirah, yani the memento, you might say, or the the memorandum on the states of uh, the dead and the hereafter. Ibn Rajab of Damascus, from the Hanbali Mazhab, Qurtubi uh, being from the Maliki, has a book on Ahwal al Qubur wa Ahwal Ahliha ila Nushur, the horrors of the graves and the states of their dwellers until the rising of the dead, in which he also examines. The, uh, the states of the believers and their bliss in the grave and the special states of the awliya. And Imam as suyuti in Sharh al-Sudur, the, uh, the expanding of the breasts in on the topic of uh, the life of the grave and barzakh and akhirah. And he mentions in there that uh, there was a Shafi'i Qadi and Faqih called known as Shaydala, Shaydala, from the 5th century. He died in the 5th century, يعني, uh, about maybe 10 years before Imam Ghazali. He has a book on Ulum al-Quran, the, the Quranic sciences. And in that book, he says, if it is asked about the same of Allah, and never count those who were killed in the way of the one God as dead, rather, they are alive, count them as alive. We say that it is possible that Allah gives them back life in their graves and for their souls to reside in some part of their bodies, the whole body experiencing bliss and pleasure because of that part, just as the whole body of the one living in the world may feel coldness or heat that might be in some part of his body, but it affects the whole it was also said that what is meant is that their bodies do not decompose in their graves, yani, but they remain, as was observed of many of the shuhada and others, also of the awliya, remain in their graves as, as if they had just died a moment ago. Imam Suyuti, after quoting uh, Shaydala, quotes Abu Hayyan, another uh, Andalusian alim from the originally he was a, he was a, he was a zahiri and then he became a shafi. Uh, also commenting on that same verse, he said people differed in his great tafsir al Bahr al Muhayyid, the encompassing ocean. Uh, people differed concerning this life. Some said its meaning is that their souls perdure without their bodies. And because the body disappears, so the soul perdures without it, because we may witness the latter's decomposition and disappearance. Others said that the shaheed is alive, body and soul, which is not invalidated by our lack of perception of it. Yani our, we cannot verify that with our, uh, the eyes of our head. For we see them in the guise of the dead while they are living. Just as Allah has said, and you shall see the mountains, reckoning them to be fixed, whereas they are passing the way the clouds are passing. And just as the sleeper might be seen in a certain form while he himself sees in his dream that which delights him or that by which he feels pain. So they ex experience different realities than what uh, their uh, external appearance lets show. Now Suyuti says, I say this is why he said, exalted is he, rather alive but you do not perceive. Whereby he gave notification to the believers of the fact that they cannot perceive this life through eyewitnessing and sensory perception. Then he mentioned some stories about those who 
who saw miraculous sights in the graves of the awliya. Among them, in Raud al-Rayahin by the Yemeni Imam al-Yafi'i, this is a dictionary of the awliya with their anecdotes and their uh, short biographical blurbs and uh, some of their beautiful sayings of the anecdotes of their life and after their, their, uh, their death. He relates in Raud al-Rayahin from one of the righteous that he said, I dug out a grave for a man who was one of the staunch worshippers and laid him in the side niche, the lahmt, the side niche of the grave. And as I was adjusting the side niche, I mean, it's canopy, a brick from the adjacent grave's side niche fell off. So an opening was created. And so I looked through that opening to see what, 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 what might I see through there. And behold, there was an old man sitting in the grave wearing white clothes, moving and making a rustling sound. Before his lap, a volume of the Quran made of gold in which he was reading. And he could see all that. And he, don't ask uh, why. And he could see. There was enough light for him to see, perhaps from the, from the Quran itself coming, perhaps from his white uh, clothes or from the gold characters of the Quran. So he raised his head towards me and said to me, has the resurrection started? May Allah grant you mercy. I said, no. Imagine, we, would, we, would, we might fall. <laughs> fall. <laughs> but he, he kept, his, he kept his, his heart going. Allah kept his heart going. He kept his composure. He, he said, no. But he must have been shaking like a leaf. His man in the grave said, Put back the, the brick in its place, and Allah grant you health. So I put it back. <laughs> Al Yafi also said one of the trustworthy grave diggers, Thiqa, grave diggers, narrated to us that he once dug out a grave, whereupon he came upon a human being sitting therein on a dais, yani like a throne like seat, with a volume of the Quran in his hand in which he was reading, and beneath him there was a river running. So he fainted, the grave digger. He fainted, that was too much for him. Allahu Akbar. And was pulled out of the grave. And he was, he was the only one seeing this. What the others saw was just the grave digger fainting. But the, what the grave digger saw was a, piece, uh, a scene of paradise. He was beholding right there in that in that spot, but usually it's just earth that is, he digs out. No one knew what had happened to him, and he did not come to until the third day. And then after that, he could retell the, his story for our benefit. Allahu Akbar. Al Yafi'i also related, as he continues, from Sheikh Najmuddin al Asbahani that the latter was present at a certain man's burial. After which the mulaqqin, what's the mulaqqin? The one who makes talqeen. What's talqeen? Prompting. Prompting. To whom? To the dead man or woman. Remember, O servant of Allah, that Allah created you. You are the, the son, you are a servant, son or daughter of a servant of Allah. You are the servant of Allah and that there is no God but he, etc. It's a talqeen of dictation of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that you believe in Allah, his angels, his books, his, his uh, messenger, etc. That's the talqeen, the prompting. And uh, it is the practice of the Sahaba al-Kiram, especially among the Sahaba of Sham and their tabi'een who transmitted it to us. And that is why Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah by and large took that talqeen as evidenced and endorsed and codified and uh, yani, uh, and assured by the ulama of all four schools. The deceased was then heard saying, 
Do you not wonder how the dead can be prompting the living? The deceased himself is saying, wonder of wonder, how the dead are now prompting the living. You see, so what, uh, what we were saying yesterday and the day before is that the believer's view of the life after death is weird. It is ironclad and it is not something to be taken lightly. That we hear, oh, he died, he died she died, they died, and they are dead. But uh, Allah said, subhanahu wa ta'ala, be careful you know, about the terms that you use. After a certain point, you are no longer allowed in aqidah, in doctrine, to believe in, in death as being the vanquisher. You are committing a kind of subtle shirk by that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator of life. He creates life and death, and then he gives life to whomever he wishes. Now, so he makes he can make the he can make the, the stone of your threshold speak if he wants, as in the hadith of, of Sayyidina Al Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib and his whole family when the Holy Prophet وسلم, said, I'm coming to you early tomorrow morning. Be all ready, I'm coming to visit you. And then he came. And he said, Ya Allah, he prayed for them. He said, protect them, Ya Rabbi, Ya Allah. These are my family, these are my people, these are my beloved ones. Protect them, Ya Rabbi, Ya Allah. And the, the stones of the house and the, the, the stones, the stone of the Uskuffa, the threshold, started. And the rest of the, the walls of the house followed. You know, like, Allahu Akbar, Ameen, Ameen, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ameen, Ameen. Like that. So if Allah gives a tongue and, and speech to the stone, you will not give it to the believer? And understanding and hearing and echoing the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so that uh, the dead man was living in the grave and saying, you know, the dead are the ones that refuse to see that, that consider that, you know, this one is finished. He's not finished. He's just starting. Has, he's just starting, barely starting. The power... Uh, is indescribable and is it is there but it has to be see, seen with the eyes of الذين يؤمنون بالغيب يؤمنون بالغيب so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of them and make us with them and among them and by them to realities these are from the haqaiq so the realities and uh, the ultimate realities are the greatest of realities because al amal bil khawatim the actions are all, are all you know al amru bi akhirati al amru bil akhirati and the whole matter rests on the hereafter on the on the end and the hereafter that's when the beginning takes place Allahu akbar imam muwaffaq ibn abi al haram or al haram al shari'i he died in 615 hijri 1218 uh, Miladi said in the exordium, the introduction to his book, Murshid al Zuwar ila Qubur al Adra, the guide to, for the visitors to the graves of the pious, the virtuous. He said, The graves of the pious are staunch houses. It is where the Sultan's close circle come for their direst woes. Yani the, 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 the most powerful of people in the Ummah will come to the graves of the pious when they are really stuck, when they are at, uh, at their rope's ends. They will come and say, Ishfa'ni. And they will say, Ya Rabbi, Ya Allah, atawassalu ilayka biha, bi sahib hadha al-qabr. And inshallah, Allah accepts. So he's saying, it is where the sultans cross the throne. You will see those in need go around them to find one with the greatest standing and sanctity in their belief as Muslims. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not misguiding all of, all of these people, all these ummah that they, they are committing a mistake. No, this is something proven. This is mujarrab. Qabru ma'ruf al-karkhi at-tiryaq al-mujarrab. That's the Salaf al-Salih would say that. Ibrahim al-Harbi, the close friend of Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, yeah, would say that. al Darakutni has recorded it in, in one of his books. So Imam al-Zahabi, 
here and there and everywhere in his Tariq al-Islam and, and Sierra Alam al-Nubala, you will never convince us of the, uh, of the contrary. It will never, ha never happen. That th this is the belief of the Sahaba Kiram. They came to the grave of Prof so Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi one of them, after seeing Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi in dream. Ya Rasulallah, istasqili ummah. Or rather, after making a slaughter, a sacrifice, and he saw that the flesh, uh, the flesh was stuck to the bone, as, had become as white as the bone, the flesh of the sacrificed animal. He, uh, his heart uh, took him immediately to the grave of the Holy Prophet. After that, he saw him in dream. And he said, Ya Rasulallah, istasqili ummatika. Faqad halaku. Ya Rasulullah, yani make a dua of, uh, of rain for your ummah, for they have perished or are almost perishing. And then he saw him in dream, he said, go and tell, uh, tell Umar to Al-Kais, Al-Kais, Ya Umar. Think, think, Umar, think. Like Al-Kais, yani use, uh, use your intelligence and use your wit and, 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 and know what you have to do. What did Sayyidina Umar he went and he did the famous Salatul Istisqa through Al Abbas, Ibn Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet, in which he said, Ya, ya Allah, we would come to you with our Prophet, and here is the uncle of our Prophet. So basically, uh, doing two things at the same time, reminding the people that it is through the Holy Prophet that this happens, and reminding the people that the descendants of the Holy Prophet has a paramount role, have a paramount role to play. You see, they are his representatives. Allahu Akbar. Uh, lesson learned, alhamdulillah. And this is what all of the, uh, the, uh, the, the four mazahib, the, uh, the ummah of, uh, of, of, of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the tuluq al sufiyyat all of that, they divide this and they practice uh, these directives of ziyara, tawassul, tadarruh, respect of Ahlul Bayt, and of putting first those that come first. Now, so he says, the the uh, the tongues of situations respond and speak. And the high, the spiritual state of those situations are eloquent for those who see. Those who do not see, they say, "What is this? What is this? What is this?" They will they will protest. If not with their tongues, with their hearts, or they will get up and leave. Subhanallah. So, but those who see the signs, they realize that, that there is good in this, and that uh, helps quickly in the in the wake of of such uh, of such visitations. It says within, they are groves. Yani, the, they do not, uh, he says, do not look at the desolation of appearances. Desolation is what? Tanya, a broken stone, some dust, a place that where no one is seen, that is desolate at night, no light, no life. That's the appearance. He says, within, they are groves wherein delight the soul of the righteous. They are riyad min riyad al jannah Stand at their graves with manners, feel shy, and say, O oh, living ones, ask mercy upon a dead one. I am the, the one who is dead. You are the living ones. No. O oh, wealthy ones, show munificence to a bankrupt one, and weep over the loss of your years of life in vain pursuits, and feel regret. This is the end of Ash-Shari'i's words. As Suyuti went on, Yafi'i also related from Al-Muhib al-Tabari, one of the Imams of the Shafi'i, uh, big faqih and big muhaddith. He has a book on the uh, virtues and descriptions of the ten that were promised paradise, that has been published, alhamdulillah, in full. Al-Riyad al-Nadira, yani the resplendent groves of paradise. Alhamdulillah, and we are talking about the groves. That's what we should call the graves. When we say outwardly the graves of the pious, inwardly we should say the groves of the paradise promised to Allah and the Prophet ﷺ to the pious. That's what we are visiting now. That's the adab of the believer in ghayb doing visitation. So he says, Yani al-Muhib al-Tabari, 
I once was with Sheikh Ismail al-Hadrami in the cemetery in Zabid in Yemen, whereupon the latter said to me, tell me, O Muhid, do you believe in the speaking of the dead? I said, yes. He said, verily, the dweller of this grave is presently saying to me that he is part of the stuff of paradise. I am part of the, the cush, cushioning of paradise. I am part of the cheer, of the good cheer served on the tables of paradise. I am part of the couch of paradise. Imagine, inshallah. There is more, inshallah, and we continue next time, inshallah, with those beautiful remembrance of death that is in reality remembrance of life, life of the heart, life of the soul, life of belief, life of Mahabba of Rasulullah, of the awliya, life of uh, the people of Barzakh that are connected now to their places in Akhira, that have long par parked yani, their, uh, their mounts yani, in the groves of paradise that were promised. And inshallah that are awaiting us and that are supporting us with their dua and their istighfar just like the angels have ever supported the believers with their bihuna bihamdi rabbihim wa yu'minuna bihi wa yastaghfiruna lilladhina amanu rabbana lilladhina tabu wa attaba'u sabilak faqihim adhab al-nar wa waqihim adhab al-jahim The angels istighfar ever for the believers so uh, so are the, the believers in Barzakh. They are now yani, part of the web of the angels also. Enter into the 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 count of my um, my servants. Enter among my angels. Now, Imam Shawaliullah even said that uh, there is a malaiki nature. In the, in the believers that is then given a full force at that time and the example of it in the prophetic sunnah is when the Holy Prophet وسلم, said of Ja'far al-Tayyar ibn Abi Talib he is now flying among the, among the angels he has, his, he has been given his, his wings and he goes wherever they go with their, with their freedom and their speed making istighfar and supporting the believers you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala support us with them in dunya and akhira ameen and make us of the people of closeness to him and his awliya not the people of distance, remoteness and coldness and sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sahbihi wa sallam alhamdulillah